Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video I'm going to introduce you to what I think is hopefully a fairly accessible method for developing your fells in an Afrobeat context. This is following a question from somebody who viewed my videos in which I've explained a bunch of stuff about Afrobeat grooves and haven't said anything about the fills yet. So here we go. This is my effort to uh, to bring you something that's that's fairly accessible and will get you going with the fills. It's not, it's not the, the be all and end all or anything, God forbid. Right, so where should we start? Let me just play a little bit and then I'll explain the straightforward rhythmic concepts that we're going to use to allow us to assemble some fills. Here we go. and so on and so forth. Now, you may ask, what are the two rhythmic concepts that we need to understand to get playing our Afrobeat fills? Um, thing number one is we're going to play the E's and R's in a 16th note context, right? So if we've got a bar of 4-4, four, four, counting 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, those are our 16th notes. And we're going to play our notes on the E's and R's like this. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a It's very hard to count 16ths and breathe as well. The E's and R's, okay? Now, it's a thing that we're, we're going to practice doing this with each hand in turn and then mix up the hands. So if I grab my sticks here and maybe I'll play the bass on the numbers and the hi-hat on the ands to give you some sense that I'm not just playing a bunch of random notes and I am indeed playing the sort of upbeat 16s, okay? So and so on and so on. Learn how to do that. It can be a little bit tricky keeping all those E's and R's going without sort of losing the plot. So if you can do something like that with your feet or get a metronome up or something to play the eights and bounce the E's and R's off that, so much the better. Once you've worked through that a little bit, you can try and then implement that in a sort of one bar groove, one bar fill setting. And the E's and R's thing on its own, well, it does give you some possibilities to be honest, but, um, you know, that's just one facet of what we're going to do. But get yourself used to it first before going on to the next step. Here we go. Bit of one bar groove, one bar fill. Okay, so that was concept number one. If you've never done that before, is that just going to happen like that? Maybe yes, maybe no. Remember, if something doesn't work the first time you try it, it's no problem. Some things we have to go and go at, some things just happen like magic. So don't worry, if it takes a little while getting used to it, even though it looks quite simple, don't let that put you off. The next concept is to use a three note grouping. Now, a three note grouping, I'm gonna take this rhythm of two notes and a rest. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm gonna put that in a 16th note constets, constets. I'm gonna put it in a 16th note context in a bar of four, four, like this. 
1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2 a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a okay so that's a three note grouping as soon as i sort of put a three note rhythmic pattern in the context of a count of four or a count of two or any other count that isn't three, then I've created a sort of juxtaposition of, of a sort of polyrhythmic pattern. I don't know, it's very hard to explain. Anyway, a bloke called um, Jeff Johnson that I interviewed a few months ago uh, has written a really, really good book on note groupings with all sorts of different uh, numbers, three notes and five notes and six notes and so on in relation to all sorts of other counts. And it's a brilliant concept um, because once you understand it, it opens up so many rhythmic vistas for you. And in particular, the three note grouping, I think, is a very, very common thing that you'll find in every type of music. So as soon as you hear even just this one exercise, you'll start recognizing how three note groupings appear everywhere. Okay, so sorry, I rambled there. Just to reiterate, we're playing a group of two notes and a rest, giving us a three note grouping counting in sixteenths. And uh, learn how to do this so you feel very intimately familiar with the rhythm that you get. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E, three E and a four E and a. Now, the whole cycle, if we're counting in bars of four four, resolves itself after three bars of four four. So the the kind of rhythmic, out of phasiness of the thing resolves itself back to the one and the beginning of the whole cycle after three bars of 4-4. Four, four. And what that means is that now we have three bars that we can play as fills, three different rhythmic patterns. If we look at bar number one in isolation, we get one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Okay? And that obviously starts on the one. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. And let's see if we can play that around the kit. And so on. Yeah, there's lots of possibilities. Let's play that bar of groove and one bar fill. Have a diddle about with that and see what happens. Do it until you feel just, as I say, intimately familiar with the rhythmic possibilities of the thing. So the pattern's just familiar, you don't have to think about counting or anything. The second bar of that three bar cycle starts on the and, so you have one and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Okay? One and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Turn it into a fill. And finally, the third bar starts on the E. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and. Okay? Same thing, one bar groove, one bar fill. and onwards and you know get used to those three bars play them get them play, play them along to your famous famous to your favorite failure songs and um, just sort of get get used to doing them so that you don't think about the, the conceptual thing anymore you start to hear them the melodic uh, nature of these things and then it just becomes a thing that you can do and you're not thinking about this is a three note grouping or whatever now the last element of this is we're going to combine the E's and R's with the three note grouping. So for, for example, if we play the first half 
of the first bar of three note grouping, we get one E and a, two E and a, and then we can resolve that with the E's and R's. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, okay? One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Let's see if I can turn that into a fill. The answer is maybe. Let's try again. Okay, uh, I didn't quite stri strictly uh, stick to the formula there, but hopefully you've got the idea. Let's see how this goes. We'll do the second bar, the first half of the second bar of the three note grouping, and again, finish that with E's and R's. So it would be one E and a, two E and, three E and a, four E and R. One E and a, two E and, three E and a, four E and R. Let's see if that comes out any better this time. Here we go. Okay, I think I'm surviving. <laughs> I've lost my flow. Okay, last example, we're gonna take the first half of the uh, third bar of the three note grouping, and then we're gonna resolve that with E's and R's, okay? Now, obviously, you can take this whole idea and reverse it and start with E's and R's and finish with the three note grouping bars as well. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I've, I've made a PDF with this stuff in it so that you can follow the rhythms with your eyes as well, because it's not always that easy to follow this thing just by watching the video. So look in the description box and you can find my PDF there, hopefully. Finally, we're gonna combine the first half of the third bar of the three note grouping with the E's and R's. And so we're gonna get something like this. One E and, two E and, a three E and, a four E and, a. One E and, a two E and, a three E and, a four E and, a. Or you could go one E and, a two E and, a three E and, a four E and, a. You can like string those together. One E and, a two E and, a three E and, a four E and, a. Let's see what happens when we turn that into a fill. And that's more or less that. That's the idea of taking the E's and R's and a three note grouping and learning how to play them reasonably comfortable, reasonably comfortably rather, so that you can combine those into Afrobeat fills. And that's the end of that. I haven't done a video in a little while. I feel like bleh, my, my ideas aren't flowing quite as well as they used to. So hopefully I covered this reasonably well and you managed to follow the idea, enough for you to take something away from this and practice and figure out how to play some fills. Um, the main thing to take away is that, you know, if you learn the rhythmic idea and you get good enough to sort of noodle about, then you can decide what sort of combinations of stickings or, you know, what orchestration of the patterns on the drums makes you feel good and makes you think this sounds kind of afrobeat -y. But I think that's a nice little formula that works. But Please let me know what you think about this. Hit me up in the comments, whatever it is. Let me know what you think. Did this help clarify the topic? Did this help introduce you to the idea of playing these fills? And you can use the same ideas in, in any other style, really. It's not exclusive to Afrobeat. But I just thought that combination of two ideas 
um, or two rhythmic patterns. Kind of works quite nicely for the style. Anyway, that will do. More videos to come, hopefully. I'm back on the saddle, in the saddle. Um, time for you to go off and practice. <laughs>